Now tuned into the greatest. The Run. The Lenny Wilson Podcast. The, the Run. The Lenny Wilson Podcast. The best sports podcast there is. Yes, sir. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Run with me, Manny Wilson, all the way from Detroit to Chicago to your speakers and headphones. I appreciate you tuning in to the first interactive sports podcast, you know, a community that makes sure your voice is heard. So if you hear something you agree with, you disagree with, you like or you dislike, go ahead, shoot us a quick take, 219-413-9405. And of course, we'll play your take back on our next episode. And then speaking of episodes, shout out to SeatGeek for sponsoring this episode. Get $20 off your first ticket purchase when you use the promo code The Run Podcast. You got to say The Run Podcast. Now, this code can only be applied to first-time users on the mobile app or our website. So not sure about you, but definitely want to hit a couple of games this year. So going to go ahead and create my account and then use that promo code, The Run Podcast. Save myself $20 there. Anyway, look, man, speaking of football and going to these games, we witnessed a great game out in London, or was it really a great game? I'm talking about the Vikings and the Jets here. The Vikings, they won over the Jets 23-17 to in London. And this was kind of a wild game. It wasn't really the most uh, tactical offense of a performance from both sides. It was kind of weird, honestly, bro. And, and you know, I, I don't think will happen. I know some people are going to call me out and be like, oh, bro, why are you hating? You're just hating on, on what we see here. Rogers the GOAT and all of that. But look, bro, let's be honest for a second. Please, please. Just think about this. I'm going to give you something to think about. Think about how crazy it is that Last week, we seen the Jets go against the Broncos, and they lost. And we said, oh, that was a terrible game. It was an awful game. The Jets didn't have it going on offense. Aaron Rodgers looked bad on offense. It was a clear miscommunication, and, you know, it won't happen again. Bad game. Bad game. That's all. Won't happen. They'll pick it up against the Vikings in London. Then, the week, the following week against the Vikings, they got progressively worse as the game went on. And they got worse than what we seen in the matchup against the Broncos. Like, I genuinely did not think it could get worse than what we seen in the matchup against the Broncos. They only had nine points against the Broncos matchup last week. And this time, they scored. They got 17 points, but it was still just an ugly performance. And you got to give a lot of this credit to Aaron Rodgers, bro. Look, before anybody say I'm hating on him, I want Aaron Rodgers to be great. I want Aaron Rodgers to go out here, be 40 years old, and still dime up the rock and still win ball games and pretty much show Brady, hey, I'm not the only one that can do this. I'm 40. I can ball out too. But damn it, this is not what we've been seeing. This is tragic right here from what we're watching with Aaron Rodgers. In this game against the Vikings, Aaron Rodgers was 29 for 54 of passing. He threw three interceptions. He was sacked three times, and he had a quarterback rating of 42. 42. Aaron Rodgers did not look good. And you know, the part that really hurt me most about watching Aaron Rodgers play bad like this, throw these bad passes, throw multiple interceptions, was the fact that I watched Aaron Rodgers with my own eyes. I watched him throw multiple bad passes and then look over at the rest at the rest as if they did something wrong. <laughs> that was the part that really blew my mind. He out here throwing bad passes. That, that's not to his receiver and over their head behind him and all of that. And then looking at the ref for a flag. What, what kind of sense does that make? If you look at the last play of that game, that the one that, that pretty much sealed it, it was the interception from the Vikings. And kudos to the Vikings because they did their thing. I want to give credit to them. They balled out. If you look at the last play, it was an interception. And Aaron Rodgers didn't even give his receiver a chance on the jump ball. He literally put the ball behind him, and the receiver had no chance in hell to possibly grab the ball. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. So I give Aaron Rodgers all of this hell because it's deserved right now. It's not because I'm trying to hate on him or anything. I'm just calling him out because it's needed. It's, it has to be said, bro. I wouldn't be right. I wouldn't do my job if I didn't acknowledge this awful performance from Aaron Rodgers. And the part... That really trips me out. I don't care how big of an Aaron Rodgers fan you are. I've seen a statistic. I've seen a stat, and it just blew my mind. It's the fact that when we look at last year with Zach Wilson on the New York Jets, so many people hated Zach Wilson all the way in week five. 
They were like, no, we hate him. We can't stand him. You know, Zach Wilson is not that guy. Only if we had Aaron Rodgers. Only if this was the only, 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 only. That's all we kept hearing is, man, the Jets need Aaron Rodgers. And they would probably be this. They would be that. They would, whatever. All of that stuff. But the thing is, through week one through five last year, Zach Wilson got the New York Jets 93 touchdown points. He scored 93 points with that offense. The New York Jets as a whole had 93 points. Correction. So the New York Jets last year with Zach Wilson, a quarterback that they despised, the fans hated him, got death threats, was treated poorly by Jets fans and everyone who is analyzing the NFL. Zach Wilson in the New York Jets scored 93 points last year. Aaron Rodgers, up to this same point, week one through week five, in the New York Jets, only has 93 points this year so far. It's a damn shame. It's a damn shame. So the same energy y'all have for Zach Wilson, y'all need to have that same exact energy for Zach or or, uh, for Aaron Rodgers right now because he's not looking good. He's not doing anything special for the New York Jets that y'all talked about so much last year. It's ridiculous. I know y'all seen Aaron Rodgers crawling around on the floor, too. That was a damn shame, bro. And the man ain't never looked over 40 in his life. He looked, he showed every bit of that age 40 on the sideline when he was crawling around. Oh, my gosh. It was just, it was nasty. It was nasty. It clearly showed, hey, I don't know. It showed the difference of what Brady did for his body compared to what Aaron Rodgers was doing. Because, man, oh, man. When you think of a 40-year-old playing football in the NFL, that's how Aaron Rodgers looked on his sideline. It's like, a four, yeah, he's 40, all right. Yeah, damn, he, that dude definitely 40. If I had to pick somebody, that one's 40. If I don't know nothing about football and I had to choose somebody who, who was 40 years old, it's definitely that dude right there, <laughs> the quarterback. He looked like it. And, and you know, I, I, I say all that to say, too, Aaron Rodgers wasn't alone. I, I mean, he wasn't alone. The Jets as a whole did not play a great game. We've seen a lot of penalties on the defensive side. Sauce Gardner had some trouble locking up Justin Jefferson. And some of these flag calls were very, very petty. I, I thought they were very tedious. But above all, it was, it was kind of hurting the Jets as a whole because – These are happening on crucial third downs and crucial downs that could have ultimately helped the Jets get the ball back for more possessions. But, you know, despite the defensive side of it, there was still guys even on the offensive side of it that wasn't helping Aaron Rodgers out. So I talk about Rodgers having these interceptions and all of that, but the receivers dropped these open passes. Lazard, Conklin, Brees Hall, like they were were not catching the ball. I don't know what it was up with, with the Jets receivers, but... They could not catch the ball. Lazard dropped a touchdown pass. That was six points. Touchdown pass. He dropped it. Let it go completely. So that hurts right there. And then you look at the O-line. You couldn't get a run game established the entire game. So, of course, now Aaron Rodgers has to throw the ball every possession. And, you know, the play call was just very questionable. It, It was wild of when they wanted to run the game and when they didn't run and run the game or run the ball, I should say. It, it was just wild to me because there was a drive. I watched them, I believe they were second and two or something, picked up a good amount of yardage, second and two, didn't convert on the run, third and two, tried to run it again, did not convert on the run. It was just embarrassing, bro. Like, you know, hey, hey for those in London who, who happened to watch this game, just know this is not, you know, the, the American football that people are so hype about. This is not the football that we watch and we're like, hey, this is, yeah, this is the football we love to see. Just know this is not it. This was not a good example of that <laughs> at all. It was an awful example of that. They're nine for 34 in third down conversions over the past two games. 0 and 2 for fourth down conversions. Like this is Jets. I don't know why we sent the Jets over there in London. Maybe because we thought Rodgers was going to have his team well established and the Jets as a whole was going to be well established by now. But this is not a good representation of American football. That was, that was an awful performance there as a whole from the New York Jets, and it was rough. But I think the Jets, man, they're cooked. They're cooked. It's over with. Dinner will be served soon because I seriously doubt we see the, the New York Jets, you know, go to the postseason and, and have a lot of success. I, I doubt they can turn it around. I would be very surprised if I did see that happen um, because next up they got the Bills. Bills have not looked good. We've seen Josh Allen just go nine for 30 or something like that which was awful. So he's going to try and have a bounce back game. Um, Then after that, they see the Steelers, the Jets and the Steelers. Steelers, great defense. 
Offense is still a little shaky, but can make something happen. Patriots, you might catch a break there. But then Texans, Cardinals, yeah, oh, yeah, the Jets is cooked. Jets is cooked. Other than that, hey, look, man, we got a side note in a quick second. Don't go anywhere. All right, look, before we get to the news, we got a quick side note here. Uh, we've been obviously watching some good football aside from the trash that we've seen in London. Uh, but there's some early MVP candidates I want to elect, man, because um, some of these guys are balling. They're doing their thing. And one of the things that crosses my mind, too, when we talk about the MVP is why is it, you know, we just haven't separated the award for like quarterback MVP? Because anytime we talk about most valuable player, typically in the, in the last three to four years, it's been quarterbacks. Despite the season a running back is having, despite the season a wide receiver is having, despite the season a defensive lineman, cornerback, safety, despite the season any other position is having, we only look at quarterbacks for some reason when we talk about the MVP. And that's kind of weird. But, you know, we're just going to play that same game. So I want to, <laughs> which is crazy. We need to change the notion, but we're going to continue on with that game uh, until they make it official of like, all right, here's a quarterback MVP and the league's most valuable player. But, all right, look, so some of the candidates we have here for the MVP early on is I, I got to elect Kirk Cousins as a, as a candidate for MVP. Baker Mayfield is in there for a candidate. I'm going Kyla Murray, C.J. Stroud, and even Jaden Daniels as an early candidate for MVP right now because all of these guys have been playing tremendous. And the most important thing I think you have to have in order to be a candidate for MVP in this NFL is to – be on a team that's winning. If you're not on a team that's winning ball games and having some sort of excitement, then you're going to be canceled out right away. And the list of these guys, obviously, we know they've been bringing it every Sunday they step on the field and every Thursday, Monday, whatever day they're stepping on the field, they're going they're going crazy. They're throwing bombs, they're smart, they're limiting turnovers, and ultimately they're showing up in big moments. One of the reasons I think Kirk Cousins has an edge right now in terms of leading the MVP candidates or leading MVP votes whenever that actually officially pops out is because we've seen Kirk Cousins have multiple game winning drives in the fourth quarter and in overtime so far. While we did see Kyler Murray and CJ Stroud have some comeback wins, it was it's not an overtime win in prime time and it's just not like it's not a franchise turning around. What we're seeing Kirk Cousins do right now is completely turn the page on a franchise that's been washed and been beaten down over the last four years. And, of course, that's a huge story for the NFL, the break. And, ultimately, this is huge for Kirk Cousins because, obviously, he's having some sort of success right now. So, as long as they can continue to win, I think we have to consider him as a serious candidate and, and someone who can actually win the MVP um, another guy, Baker Mayfield, man, this dude has been balling. I know Baker Mayfield, you know, recently lost and, you know, it, 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 hey, Falcons won. Hey, they the better team, whatever. But Baker Mayfield has been on another level. We've seen him kind of, you know, reach this steady level of play last year where Baker Mayfield was balling. He looked good in the past, in the, in the last games of last season, like maybe the last five or six games of the end of the season last year. In the playoffs, Baker Mayfield was pretty decent as well. And now he's come out with a completely, completely different swagger. Like, I, I mean, the man is, it, I, I think the, the word I'm really looking for, not even swagger. I don't, I don't think Baker Mayfield has come out with a completely different swagger. I think he's come out with a completely different intellect. Like, He's been very decisive. He's been reading defenses at, a, at another level that we've never seen him do before. So you got to give credit to Baker Mayfield for holding it down. Kylo Murray, obviously, with him being healthy and having these comeback wins like he had against San Francisco is huge. He's got a great receiver in Marvin Harrison Jr. over there, and he's really putting him to work. So we see Kylo Murray healthy, and a lot of people forget because of recency bias that, oh, this guy's actually good. Yeah, he's only 5'7", five, 5'8", five, but this dude is actually good. He can scramble, he's smart, he can throw, he's accurate. All of these different qualities that we forgot about Kyler Murray, and now that he's back healthy and winning ball games, it's on display, and we're realizing, like, oh, shit, maybe this dude is a, maybe he seriously is an MVP candidate. So you got to consider him, C.J. Stroud, doing his thing, very young quarterback, had a great season last year, and now we see him kind of picking up where he left off. I'm um, a little bit more of a challenge because teams is trying to throw a little bit more at him. But, you know, above all, he's still been playing great. And then Jaden Daniels, 
quarterback of the Washington Commanders, doing his thing. This dude, a rookie quarterback, has caught me by surprise. I, I, I know everyone has so much hype about, oh, yeah, Jaden Dillers is going to come in. He's going to shock the world. And, and while I partially believe that, I thought he was going to be great. It's just something different when you see that guy actually out there executing on the field. Um, at this tier and, and at this elite level, like the dude has been balling. He's got the highest completion percentage in the NFL right now. So, you know, that kind of tells you how accurate and decisive he's been, you know, through the season so far within the first four to five weeks. But in particularly, man, I, I think these quarterbacks right now, they have an advantage because they're winning and they bring an edge of excitement whenever you're watching them play. Whenever you watch one of these teams that these guys are on, whether it be Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, CJ Stroud, Kirk Cousins, or Jaden Daniels, it's going to be exciting. You know you can rely on some solid quarterback play. And above all, that's going to be the thing that really propels them to be an MVP candidate. So um, I'm rolling with those guys right now. Not saying who's going to actually win and all of that. But right now, if I had to choose, me being unbiased, me being unbiased, I'm going with Kirk Cousins just because he's he's had the man, he's had the late game comebacks. He's had him in prime time too, which just makes that much more of a difference. And he's turning his team around, turning his franchise around in the first few games. So this is huge stuff for Kirk Cousins. But right now, I'm going with him if I had to choose an MVP. Um, anyway, look, man, let's get to some news real quick because uh, why not? And I'll tell you this too, man. Go ahead, shoot us a quick take. On our voicemail line, if you heard something you agree with, you disagree with, you like or you dislike, 219-413-9405. And of course, we will play your take back on our voicemail line. But hey, man, we got some news coming up. Let's do it. All right, and news for the run. Starting off with college football, the game day scores. It was some good games in college football this weekend. Uh, a lot of upsets. Oh, my gosh, it was a lot of upsets. So, number four, Tennessee, they were number four. I'll give you the new rankings, but I'll just pick up where I left off. Number four, Tennessee, they fell short to Arkansas, who's not even ranked. Um, they lost that game 19-14. to 14. Georgia, they did take care of business against Auburn in that huge rivalry. They won 31-13. to 13. Um, Iowa, they lost to Ohio State 35-7. to 7. Penn State, they beat UCLA 27 to 11. Miami, they were ranked number eight, and they almost lost this game against California, but they came back in the last minute victory. Man, I, I looked at it for a second. I cut the game off. I'm like, no way, absolutely no way Cal blows this league, but they did. And shout out to Miami, man, because that was that was a crazy, crazy, crazy performance, crazy, crazy comeback. Um, you had Texas AM. They were ranked number 25, and they beat Missouri, who was ranked number 9, 41-10. to 10. This was a beatdown in that game. Number 11, USC, was disappointed uh, because they lost to an unranked team in Minnesota. Ole Miss, they did take care of business against South Carolina, 27-3. to 3. Uh, But above all, you have Florida State. They still in a huge slump. They lost to Clemson, who's ranked number 15. And the games that you do care about, Alabama and Vanderbilt, was a game that just really blew my mind. I, I didn't know what to do. Watching Bama get beat like this, I wanted to just go in a corner and cry. I was sad, bro. I was sad. I'm not going to lie. I was sad. Um, they lost to Vanderbilt 40-35. to 35. Um, Man, that was, it was just rough. It was rough. It was rough. But shout out to Vanderbilt, man. They, You got to give credit where it's due. They did their thing. Uh, Michigan, they lost to Washington, who's unranked as well. Another upset. Michigan was ranked number 10, and now they are not ranked number 10 anymore. They lost to Washington 27-17. to And, man, it, it was just wild. It was wild. So some of the new rankings, um, I'll just give you, you know, the top five teams as of right now, and then I'll, you know, maybe I'll go into some more. But as of right now, um, the new number one, because it was previously Bama, but they are not number one after losing to Vanderbilt. Texas is now number one. Ohio State is number two. Oregon is number three. Penn State at number four. And Georgia at number five in college football right now. Bama, they were number one, but they dropped down to number seven. Um, you had undefeated Miami. They were at number eight, but now they are at number six. 
In Tennessee, they were ranked top five as well. They were at number four, and they fell all the way to number eight. So this was it's, it's crazy, man. Things are changing in college football. Um, but some of the other teams, too, uh, that you might notice, Notre Dame, they're still at number 12 right now. Um, Clemson, they're at number 10. Um, you got LSU, 13. Texas A&M, now 15. They're a ranked team. Michigan is pretty much falling off the board. Um, they're at number 24 from previously being ranked at number 10. And, man, that's rough. But the cool thing, Oregon at number three. You got three Big Ten schools in a top five right now. That's crazy to say because Oregon is Big Ten and Penn State is Big Ten and Ohio State. That's crazy. But anyway, look, man, hey, later on this week, I'll give you some more matchups of, you know, everything that happened. But let's move to the NFL because we know there's a couple of great games coming on. Or there's one great game coming on tonight. You got the Saints and the Chiefs. Um, that's happening in Kansas City. But to recap some of the scores from the NFL, obviously, you know, from talking and listening to me, I would say the Jets, they lost to the Vikings 23 to 17. The Bears, they played in London also, and they won that game 36 to 10 over the Carolina Panthers. It was a beat down. Ravens had a great, great, great win in overtime against the Cincinnati Bengals. And that pushed the Bengals to one and four. Ravens, they won 41 to 38. They're three and two now back positive. But, man, the Bengals, this is rough for them. I mean, man, one in four? Oh, yeah, those playoff, those playoff chances is getting shot by the week more and more and more. Um, you had the Commanders. They beat the Browns 34-13. to Jaden Daniels did his thing, had 238 yards, threw a touchdown pass. Jaguars, they beat the Colts 37-34. Uh, Bills, um, they ended up losing to the Texans 23 to 20. And actually for the Jaguars too, I did want to say this. I'm skipping back just a second. Um, they won. This was their first game. They were 0-3. Now they're fine or they were uh, 0-4. Now they're finally 1-4. So they got their first win for the Jaguars. Definitely happy for them. Um Cardinals, they beat the 49ers in a close, close matchup here. They ended up coming back. They were trailing by I think at one point, maybe. 13 points, I believe it was. But they were trailing by double digits. Um, and Carolina, they ended up, or the Cardinals, ended up coming back and winning that game 24-23. to And look, man, I ain't going to repeat any other scores. But, hey, go check them out. Go check out the rest of them that's there. But, you know, some people, they're wondering right now. The Bears, they're rolling. They're like, all right, hey, the Bears won. They did their thing. Hey, they beat the Panthers in London. They looked a little bit better. And, and I'm not, I'm not going to disagree with that. I'm not going to disagree at all. The Bears definitely looked a lot better. Do I think, you know, they're going to start dominating this season? Absolutely not. No, I do not. And a couple of reasons I say they're not going to start dominating this season. One, because they played a good game and it was against the Panthers. Look, matchups is everything. The Panthers, they've been bad this season. Every team that's played them has really been like going crazy besides the one game Andy Dalton had and he turned it to Tom Brady. That was just weird, but clearly that wasn't the case against the Bears. Now, the reason why I say the Bears still have some things to worry about is because there was a lot of positives here, but, you know, the things change on a week-to-week basis. So some of the positives, I'll start with them, is obviously Caleb Williams had much better protection in his game. You got to give credit to the O-line as well. You had Pryor and Murray stepping up big for the O-line after you had some injuries on that offensive line. You lost two starters, and you got guys coming from the backups, and they're doing their things. They only gave up one sack. Caleb Williams went down once. But we've seen this open up the game a lot more for the Chicago Bears. You've seen some screen passes that finally had some success. Um, You've seen the run game. It was able to finally open up, have some sort of success. Screen, uh, uh, the passing game in general was able to evolve downfield. And one of the biggest difference makers I've seen here was the fact that the Bears were able to capitalize on opportunities in the red zone. They were three from four in the red zone when throwing the ball and just scoring in the red zone in general, I should say. Three for four. And it, it worries me because I'm like, with so much success... In this week against the Panthers, like I almost wouldn't want to change anything if I'm heading in the next week. And and obviously you got a game plan, you got to figure out you know what's going to be best. But the thing that we've seen in the previous games with the Chicago Bears is the fact that 
there was just a lack of effort on the offensive line. It seemed like they just had some screws missing and not in a good way. Like it seemed like they just forgot blocks and didn't know who to go get on blocks. It seemed like just mental errors from the Chicago Bears O-line, but we didn't see that in this game against the Panthers. We seen, I, there's a few, there's a select few where I'm like, okay, guys clearly missed blocks, but in terms of being able to execute on a consistent basis, we have seen guys do that for the most part against the Panthers here. And obviously, we know the defense still continued to keep the Bears alive, but as long as the defense can keep the Bears alive and the offense can somewhat be decent, then the Bears got a shot at winning most of their games. Like, they don't have a seriously elite schedule here. Bears aren't going against, you know, stacked teams every week. I'm looking at the schedule. Jaguars is next. That's cake. You got that. Commanders is going to be tough. It's in D.C. That's going to be tough. You play the Cardinals in Arizona. That's going to be tough on a row. But other than that, Patriots, Packers, Vikings, Lions, your division is the toughest part, but you don't see that back into the schedule until. So this is the time, honestly, for the Bears. Hey, this is the time you do got to kind of enjoy the win, but it's going to get scary, and you got to learn a lot from these losses or from these wins and losses that you have in the next few weeks because when division play comes, it's going to get crucial. It's going to get tough. And it's not going to be easy at all when that division play comes because we know what kind of teams the Vikings are right now. We're, we're all shocked about the Vikings, especially after not having J.J. McCarthy. Man, shocked about them. Green Bay Packers, we know what they bring. Lions, obviously, we know what they bring. 49ers, Seahawks. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, see, you see some dogs later on in this schedule. It just start off light. So these gimme type of games, you want to make sure you really attain those games and really lock in on those games. To You want to win those. You need them. Those is important. Anyway, look, man, hey, that's all we got for y'all today. So, of course, appreciate you hanging with us. And, hey, shoot us a quick take. If you heard something you agree with, you like, you dislike, or even if you just want to outsmart me on something I said, um, that number is 219 413 9405. And then, hey, man, I'm gonna leave y'all with a positive note, or just, you know, yeah, a positive note. I'm gonna leave y'all with this, man. Um, and, and that positive note is just gonna be, you know, there's always two sides of things. Um, just the same way there's always two sides of an argument, there's always two sides of things. And, and I look at that in terms of when something bad happens, there's always the other side of looking for the positive in that situation. Um, sometimes it may not be as obvious or evident as others, but just know there's always that other side where there's definitely something out there where you can find a positive in it. You trip and fall. I mean, hey, at least you didn't break your knee. You might have scraped it, but you didn't break it. I, I mean, there's always some sort of positive in any situation. And at some point um, with you going on any type of journey or any type of run where it's tough for you or. It's going to be difficult and hard. You got to dig for those positives, man, because the negatives is always easy to point out. It's easy to be like, oh, that's dirty. That's not good enough. This is not how I like. It's so easy to to be picky about different things that you don't like, but it's you, you got to give yourself the grace of being able to find the positives too. like, oh, I put out a bad episode, but hey, I put it out. It's consistent. I did it again. I, I gave effort. Always some positive. So I'm going to leave y'all with that. Accept that however you want to. Other than that, look, hey, man, follow us on Instagram at The Run Podcast. Follow us on TikTok, all of that stuff at The Run Podcast, the YouTube, um, if you watch on YouTube and all of that. Um, but anyway, uh, there was one last thing. Yes, I was going to tell y'all, send this to a cousin, a brother, an aunt, an uncle, a niece, a nephew, co-worker, friend, spouse, partner, um, baby mama, second baby mama, third baby mama. Um, anybody you know who will enjoy this, especially if they enjoy sports, definitely send us their way. Um, but other than that, man, hey, I will see y'all later on next week or this week. See y'all later on this week. We're going to watch the Chiefs beat the Saints or maybe, maybe we won't. But all right, look, man, hey, I'm up out of here. I've I've wasted too much time. I'm up out of here. We'll see y'all later on this week and so on and so on and so on.